public was a credible theory that should be looked into. You know, a lot of those people were derided as, as fringe, you know, conspiracy theorists. So are there lessons learned, you know, looking back about how we discuss um, theories when we don't have all of the answers? So what, here's what I can tell you is the president's commitment to getting to the bottom of this, right? That is what's the most important so that we can, you know, we can share this with Congress, we can share this with the American people. That is why he asked the IC uh, to do its work. And right now there is no consensus. There That's is no- again, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, White House press secretary, answering questions about, hey, reflecting back, especially with the Department of Labor saying that, say, the lab leak theory seems likely, especially with now the FBI assessing the COVID-19 pandemic being likely spread from the Wuhan lab, according to the FBI director, uh, despite uh, you know, all the speculation uh, for for years now that that was the case. Uh, is it time to reflect back and how people were treated when they brought this question forward years ago on uh, the White House saying, well, you know, they're, they're not really answering that question, just really kind of pushing back and saying there's no consensus yet on the lab leak. But I think it's an important thing to reflect back because there was censorship that happened, right? Uh, they, they, even you know, YouTube was blocking people from being able to discuss it as a question. Um, people were chastised. I mean, all the corporate press and all the late night comedians made fun of Donald Trump for, you know, even making the suggestion. Uh, so you, it's important to look back and, and it was that behavior appropriate to chastise people for simply asking questions? But it's also important to look back and reflect upon decisions that were made to severely impact the economy uh, and to impact education and even health outcomes or even the effectiveness of the vaccine. So again, some of the headlines, uh, you got the FBI saying that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, quote, likely spread from the Wuhan lab. You've got the Energy Department saying that as well. China pushing back. You've got the U.S. Senate that's voting unanimously to declassify COVID-19 Wuhan lab leak intelligence. Uh, So all of this working together. But what about the vaccine? Here's another headline. Fauci takes heat after casting doubt on efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines. And uh, another headline. Researchers, citywide vaccine mandates did nothing to stop the spread of COVID-19. I had an opportunity to ask Governor J.B. Pritzker to reflect a bit on his position positions of mandates and so on from throughout the COVID pandemic, because now we're about three years since he ordered a statewide stay at home order, impacting businesses, telling kids they can't go to school in person. And then all of the series of uh, consecutive executive orders and disaster proclamations and the mandates, the vaccine mandates in particular, Uh, now that we've got uh, other indication that the the vaccines weren't as effective as maybe they thought that they were. It was told that you were going to be inoculated. Uh, That's what uh, is kind of synonymous with vaccine. But I know a lot of people who get the COVID-19 vaccine, all the boosters, and they're dealing with uh, COVID-19 or the the after effects of COVID-19. Now, there's a whole host of other reasons. That could be it could be just general health or whatnot, but but still reflecting back on it, were these mandates useful or were they harmful? Were decisions to lock down the state's economy and education harmful or were they helpful? Uh, so reflecting back, and this is kind of uh, interesting, just to see the 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 back and forth that there is of um, how at one point you know we were told that. Uh, you we're not going to have vaccine mandates, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have vaccine mandates. Uh, at one point, you were told uh, you don't have to wear a mask, and then, boom, you were told you had to wear a mask. That started three years ago with uh, the, the state's health officials, uh, including Dr. Ngaze Azike, if you remember. She said that, uh, indeed, uh, the the COVID-19 threat uh, to the public remains low. Here she is three years ago, February 28th, 2020. The risk of infection to Illinoisans is low. However, we have to plan and prepare for all possibilities. Please be confident that the Illinois Department of Public Health will communicate quickly and transparently if there are any changes in the risk level here in Illinois. And uh, after that, the risk level did change considerably. Again, two weeks afterwards, you had the speculation of restaurants being closed, and then it happened, and then the stay-at-home order, and then the months of uh, uh, continued executive orders now um, three years in. And even uh, the governor's continued executive orders will maintain until sometime in May when the federal COVID 
disaster lifts. Uh, but uh, I had a chance to ask the governor uh, yesterday about uh, if, you know, now three years in, he has any regrets, especially with some of the other headlines that are coming out, like Dr. Anthony Fauci casting doubts on the effectiveness of the vaccines or vaccine mandates uh, not really being as beneficial as uh, uh, some had speculated. Here's what the governor had to say. It's funny. You, you, it's easy to look back and say, you know, if I knew then what I know now, would I have done something differently? I'm sure that's true about almost anything that we might talk about, that any of us would look back and say, is there something different I might have done if I knew then what I know now? So, uh, you know, there are all kinds of things like that. I've, I've uh, been asked this question before. I think about it. Um, I think it was all a tr- kind of a traumatic period for everybody, right? The worst parts of the pandemic. Um, and I, I, you know, what are the ways in which we could have alleviated uh, the suffering of people? Um, one that I often think about is, could we have had a mask mandate earlier? Should we have? Would, ha- would that have saved more lives? Uh, as it is, we saved an awful lot of lives, I think, with the, the uh, Restrictions that were in place, and and people followed them, importantly. Uh, But if you look at uh, the comparison, for example, between how we did versus how the state of Florida did, where they really had no requirements, no mandates, um, thousands and thousands uh, more people would have died uh, in Illinois if we had followed the lead of a state like Florida. If they had followed our lead, thousands fewer people would have died in Florida. So just as one example, uh, I, 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 I'm i sure there are things I would have done differently, but but here we are. I think we're all learning, you know, uh, uh, years into it now, um, more of the science, which we couldn't have known early on. And we've learned that the, the vaccines work. The vaccines work. Let's be clear. We're, many of us are able to gather indoors, uh, now because so many people are vaccinated and the vaccines work. So again, Governor J.B. Pritzker uh, answering my question on does he uh, reflect back on the three years and have any regrets as to his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and he, he talks about Florida, which is interesting because a, a report that came out from the National Bureau of Economic Research in April of 2022 uh, actually uh, graded all of the states. And uh, if you look at it real close, Illinois... Uh, Uh, ranked at number 46 for total outcomes with an F total outcomes uh, when you combine economic health to physical health to education and so on when you have all those numbers combined uh, Illinois again ranks near the bottom 46 with an F Florida ranked number six with an A and that's uh, showing that even you know with uh, with uh, not having as many mandates in place, uh, Florida's health outcome uh, may have been right around the same as Illinois' health outcome, but Florida's economy and education outcome, uh, according to this report from from last year, uh, indicating that's different. Uh, but you also have again uh, other headlines, and uh, this one coming from. Uh, Dr. Fauci, in a uh, report that he he wrote, essentially uh, casting doubt on the effectiveness of vaccines in an article in Cell Host, uh, he laid that out, essentially, uh, you know, questioning with with his long as it takes to get vaccines approved uh, and uh, the changing nature of uh, respiratory viruses. Uh, it's it's not really a surprise that you're not going to have the most effective vaccine. So uh, let's uh, go to a quick call here. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Greg, March 1st now declared John Stewart Vindication Day. And he had the uh, the time he came out and and put Stephen Colbert on uh, on uh, pretty uh, thin ice. Uh, you could see how yeah, uneasy whenever, Colbert uh, was when Stewart said, "Hey, you know, it's not like you can call a uh, you can point to a, a pangolin kissing a turtle uh, when there's no, a Wuhan it, virus lab right down the street." If there's chocolate flowing through the streets in Hershey, Pennsylvania, we might want to look at the Hershey, you know, factory. Just maybe take a look. Just maybe and take yeah, a look. Yeah, yeah. He was he was called racist for that. Yeah, he was very racist. So yesterday on his podcast, he was uh, definitely feeling vindicated. So yeah. So maybe March first is uh, vindication day for John Stewart. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if that uh, if that rings true. Uh, appreciate the call, and uh, it's uh, interesting to see just exactly how this is being discussed now, three years into it, uh, and how it's going to be discussed even in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. 